Hello everyone and welcome back to the garage. Finally made it here with part 2 of the engine service on the Daytona. So in this video I plan to fill the cooling system with distilled water, warm the engine up, do an oil change, flush the cooling system a few times until I get clean water coming out, fill it with coolant, and then just balance the throttle bodies. And that's probably it for this video. There are a few things left to have a full engine service uh, as per Triumph recommendation, which the only thing left is probably uh, adjusting the throttle and clutch cable, possibly lubing them, but I might leave that for another time because I need to take the whole front end off the bike and uh, replace the bearings. So yeah, thanks for being here and enjoy the video. So we're ready to fill the cooling system. I just need to tighten the drain plug here. I will put a new washer but not right now. As I said, I will fill the cooling system with just uh, distilled water a few times to flush it all out and then put proper coolant last time. And I'll fit my vacuum tool on it and we're gonna, we're gonna vacuum test the system and then fill it. So for those who aren't very familiar with vacuum tools for cooling system, this is what they look like. It's just a gauge that you fit onto the thermostat housing. In this case, have got another adapter. You put compressed air in here. It creates a Venturi effect, which creates a vacuum on this end inside the tool. The tool goes up to minus one bar. And yeah, basically just creates a vacuum in your cooling system. You maintain it, see if it uh, if it's got any leaks or not, and if all is good, use the other hose to fill it all up. So I'll show you how that works. So here we are, I've got it all set up. The tool itself is sitting in the thermostat housing where the radiator cap used to go. I've got the adapter on, I've got compressed air here. I've got this end going in my container with distilled water. I've got just a vent hose in the container to avoid any spills. One more thing I need to do before I start, this is the hose going to the overflow tank and I need to block that off because otherwise that's just an open leak path. So I've got a hose clamp. It's all closed now. So before I start, I'm gonna just prime my system. So this is the hose going into my container. I'm just gonna open this tab, open the other side. And as soon as I open this one, compressed air is gonna create vacuum in the tool and suck the water up to here. As soon as I see water here, I'm just gonna close this one because then I know the hose is primed and when I try to fill it, I'm not gonna suck all that air in first before any water. So yeah, let's do that first step. There we go, hose is primed. As you saw, it pushed out a bit of water here, so it's good to have a container there. It's primed, just open this. We're gonna create vacuum now, as soon as the gauge hits about somewhere between 15 and 20. I'm gonna close this tap off, close the other one to stop the air, and just let it sit for a bit and see if it holds vacuum. So let's do that. We're just gonna wait for a couple of minutes and if the value doesn't change we're gonna assume we've got no leaks and go on and fill it. So there we go, it all looks good. All I need to do now is open the tap for the hose going into my water container and let it do its job. I have to say this is a great tool, especially on a bike like this where the cooling system is quite hard to fill and there are bikes out there with cooling system is even harder to fill where you'd absolutely need a tool like this which is why I got one but ever since I've got it I've used this every time I needed to fill a cooling system so it's a great tool to have yeah it should be full so I've got my air closed now all I need to do is open this tap and I'm just gonna lose vacuum the water went back into my tank and I can take it off and put the cap on There we go, it's full. So I'm also gonna put some water in my overflow tank, which I'm later gonna replace with coolant, but it did have one of the fittings for the vent hose broken off. So I managed to get the broken bit out with, a, with an old wood screw. I don't know if you can see it, but someone tried to glue it before. That made it harder for this to come out. But we've got a new fitting, which I'm gonna put on right now.
I've got the fuel tank connected now, so I'm gonna start it, let it warm up, do a quick but much needed oil change, and we'll probably adjust the throttle bodies afterwards. Let's see if she starts. So there we go, I've got the engine all nice and hot. Just gonna clean this uh, drain plug a bit because it's all manky. And sadly, I don't have the right tool for the filter. I don't have the right size, which is a bit annoying. All my sizes are different. So I should uh, upgrade my tool set. So I've got one of these, which is a bit of a, which would be a bit of a squeeze, but I think I might just manage to get it out. If not, I'll find a different way. So yeah, let's clean that drain plug a bit. So there we go, I've got the oil drained out. All I need to do now is torque my sump plug to 25 newton meters. And that's it. And now let's remove that oil filter. And that's it, I'm just gonna let it finish dripping, clean around a bit, fill the new filter with oil, and put it up there. And I'll just have it hand tight. It doesn't need to be very tight there. I've got my new filter, it's a high flow. And we also have this oil Chris has provided for us. It's not what I'd usually use, so it's the first time I see oil packaged like this. Really interesting. So yeah, I'm just gonna take the cover of the new filter and fill it up with oil. Well, full, mostly full and that will just help the bike on the first start rather than having to fill the oil filter before getting oil everywhere it's already gonna have some oil in the filter to push around and let's hope I don't make a mess now if you look in the manual there probably is a torque setting for oil filters at least there is on the BMWs I'm more used to working on but in this case especially because I don't have the right tool to torque it down anyway I'm just gonna do it hand tight and that is enough Actually, if I do a hand tight, that's probably going to be too much anyway, so here it goes. There we go. We're pretty close to the top limit, but I'm sure that will go down after I start the engine again. But that's not going to be tonight. So I've let this oil sit for a while, so the deposits will go to the bottom. And now I'm using my oil vacuum pump to suck it all out. And... Um, See if there's any debris left on the bottom of the container. Let's see what we get. So it's not as clean as I was hoping. It's quite messy in there. So yeah, people, do your oil changes. Right, so we've got the oil change done. The water had some time to go around the system and wash it up. And now I'm gonna drain it and fill it again. And depending on the condition of the water, how clean it looks. I'm gonna decide whether I put water in it again or I fill it straight with coolant. So I've already taken the cap off. Now I'm just gonna take this bottom coolant hose off and then the drain plug for the engine block. So let's see what that looks like. That's one sure way to make a mess. I wish they just had a drain plug. Well, I managed to make quite a mess. That looks quite dirty in there. It's definitely not clean. So I'll fill this with water again, at least, at least once. Run the engine, drain it again and see what it looks like. And eventually fill it with fresh coolant. So I've done about five flushes now and the last one came out pretty clean. So I think we're ready to fill it up with coolant. So I've got some coolant mixed up. I'm gonna put some new crush washers on the drain and bleed plugs. Put the drain plug in and tighten it 13 Newton meters. Just nip up the bleed plug, because I'm going to take that out a bit later to see if there's any air trapped inside. And yeah, go ahead and fill it. Let's see how that goes.
So one more thing I'm gonna do is lift my container up. So it's gonna help it go down. There's just a tiny bit of vacuum left. And uh, I'm gonna take the leaf plug out and see if there's any air left in there. And because I have my container out, it's just gonna siphon back in there. There we go. Should be full now. Tighten the plug to five newton meters. So we're done. Cooling system is all full. I'm gonna run the bike up to temperature and then check it again, but it should all be good. And, uh, and once it's up to temperature, I'm gonna do probably the last job in this video, which is synchronize the throttle bodies. So yeah, I'll see you a bit later when the bike's warmed up. So I was just about to start synchronizing the throttle bodies before the track struck. I noticed my fitting was leaking a bit, a bit of fuel. This is the high pressure side, this is the return line. Uh, I know it was just weeping a bit of fuel underneath, but I thought it's, it's enough to finish the engine service. But when I actually started for the last time to run it to warm the engine up and synchronize the bodies, it was actually spraying fuel everywhere. So it definitely had a crack. So what I've done is put a spanner on it, try to undo it, and guess what? It snapped off. So this is not this. This is the one I moved from the return line. This is the one that was actually there, and it just snapped off. So I was left with this bit stuck in there. I had to warm up, to heat up, and insert a, a spline or a triple square in it and take it out. I tried with extractors, but they were just um, just removing plastic from inside. They weren't gripping in it, but this worked fine. However, be careful when you insert hot things in a tank with fuel inside. Funny thing though, this is almost empty. It's more dangerous to have an empty tank full of vapors than a tank full of fuel because it's just fuel, no air, it's not gonna do much. But if it's full of vapors, it's gonna blow. So yeah, use common sense, be careful when you do stupid things like that. And yeah, I removed the, this is the fitting that was on the return line. It just had a, a bit of the, the return fitting stuck that was broken off. So I managed to take that out with an extractor. So yeah, we got the fitting there. I'm just gonna put this in as a plug for now. And we're gonna attempt to finally finish this video. I must have started this ages ago and I just had different things to do and never finished it. Look at that. We're back in business. And we should hear the fuel pump priming now. Yeah. Do that a few times. Don't see any leaks, so that's great. Oh, oh, spoke too soon. We have a leaky fitting. So I got the fuel tank supported upwards, so I can gain access to the throttle bodies, got the airbox out of the way here, but not completely removed. So now I can just start the engine, let it warm up, and start adjusting. Got one adjustment screw here, and one down there. So for this one, I might have to remove the auto control valve, take it out of the way, but it's just held in by two bolts. Move it out a bit and adjust it. So there it is, easy job. I'll just warm the bike up and when we're ready, I'll just um, show you the gauges, adjust it, and we're good to go. Because this one was so far up, that's probably the only thing that kept the bike running. But now, in order to run it, we'll have to uh, keep the revs up a bit.
just make sure the notches are lined up. That's it, we're ready to put the ignition on. That's it, got it all the way in now. Just gonna spray a bit of grease on this as well, but not too much. Did a bit on the o-ring as well, and we're ready to put the top back on. Goes probably like this. Here we go. even after adjusting the throttle bodies but because the spike sat for a long period of time it's gonna change a bit once it starts going so I feel it's gonna be a waste of time trying to make the spike run better now or do the procedure again so the plan is to take it for a few good rides and then see what it's like adjust the, the throttle bodies again probably will need that and um, although this is an early 955i and the manual suggests to use the procedure I've done just to use a digital vacuum meter I might try to use Tune ECU and see if that works. It probably will do, and I'm curious to see if there's a big difference between the analog gauges I use and Tune ECU. But that's a job for another day. And that's it. Don't think I missed anything on the engine service. I'll, uh, I'll adjust and lubricate the throttle and clutch cables as well, but I might do that when, when I'll take care of the front end. That's probably going to be the next video on this bike. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'd like to apologize to everyone that's been waiting for this video, or videos on this bike. I know there are a few people that express their interest in videos on this bike in the comments, so I'm very grateful for, to those. It's always good to get comments of people know, uh, to know what they'd like to see, or just uh, to see some appreciation for the time and effort you put into these. But also I'd like to apologize to Chris, the owner of this bike, who, although is very patient, but would like to see his bike in one piece again. So yeah, there'll be more videos on this bike coming out soon. Next one will be the front end probably. There'll also be the front, the back end, the suspension, the bearings have some place, so I'll have to sort that out. And yeah, maybe something on the bodywork and uh, smaller bits around the bike, lights, stuff like that. And yeah, we're gonna see it through to get it done. Thanks for watching and see you again next time.